One disease outbreak can wipe out years and months of hard work at your livestock farm. How do we prevent this? Today's focus is going to be on biosecurity measures to put in place at your livestock farm, the vaccination schedules you can follow, and the signs to catch early to avoid this wipeout. Joining me in this very important discussion is our ever-loving farm manager, Godfred. Uh, he's going to take us through all of these steps because he has practiced them and he's still practicing them right here at the Semensha Learning and Development Farm. We only share with you what works for us, remember. That's why all of these animals are thriving beautifully. But as always, if you have any questions on your mind after this video discussion, kindly let's engage under the comment section. And if you just chanced on this video, this is Farming in Africa. We are passionate about revolutionizing the livestock industry in particular, in the world of agriculture, in Africa and beyond. Let's go and have Godfred take us away in this production. Hi Godfred. Hello. Let me close this because it says, keep gates closed, no matter what the goods tell yes, you. How are you they doing? Are with you, you need to close it. <laughs> you need to close it, yes. really. Anyway, good to see you. Good to see you um, as always, we've come to the farm to glean knowledge. Also because usually we get certain inquiries, certain questions from aspiring farmers, okay. practicing ones, and what's best way or better way than to come here mm -hmm. and get it. So yeah. today's focus okay. is on biosecurity measures. How do we prevent disease outbreaks at our livestock farms, Godfrey? All right, so biosecurity is a bit broad. Okay. Because um, mm -hmm. it's not only the food bath that you put on your farm that people step in. I see. But even right from when you buy the new goods, if you want to um, add new goods to your to your flock, yeah, you need a biosecurity measure there. So I see. what you need to do is once you bring in fresh animals or new animals to your farm, you quarantine them. For okay. It depends. Okay. Of how they are doing. So you quarantine them to look out for illness. Um, before you add them to your, your, your animals. So, so the quarantine the first... thing we do is all part of the biosecurity yes, yes, measures? Yes, 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 yes. So it's wow. very important that anytime you buy an animal, yeah. no matter where you buy them from, yes. you need to quarantine them for some time before you add them to your flock. How long should we quarantine them? So it, can, it could be from between 21 days upwards, wow. depending on how um, healthy the animal looks yes. or how if you do your checks well and then you see they are doing very well. From 21 days, you can add them to... Nothing less than 21 days. No, so we are looking at three solid weeks yes. and above. Yes, yes, yes. And whilst keeping them in that period, what do you look out for? Yes, so yes. one is um, illness. So you need to look out for how healthy the animal is. Right, so when you bring them, you make sure that the practices that you do on your farm um, for your old animals, the new ones that are there, you mm -hmm. practice the same thing for them as well. Okay. So the main um, reason you keep them mm -hmm. under quarantine is mm -hmm. to look out for illness before you add them. Wow. And you mentioned something interesting. Aside looking out for illnesses, you said it's a period you introduce them to the routines at your farm. Yes, yes, yes. With, with what you have experienced, is, is that particular period easy? Are there some animals that no matter what won't adjust within the quarantine space? Talk to me um, about that so, experience. Yeah, with that, mm -hmm. it's not that easy because they are new animals on your farm yes. and then they have some practices that they are not used to. Yes. Right? Yes. So with that, it would take some time before they adjust mm -hmm. to that. So as, even for grazing, maybe where your graze, their pasture is. Yes. Maybe for them, if you look at our farm, our grazing pasture fits the, 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 their pens. Yes, yes, Maybe yes. yours is at the back, so it's, it will not be easier for them to move there. Mm. So you need to take time for them to know places to enter, where not to enter. Hey. So that period is a bit um, difficult, but with time, they will get used to that. With time, they will get used to that. So what you are saying is never immediately add a new flock to the existing flock. No, you don't need to. And that period is to help you, the farmer, look out for any illnesses yes. and also introduce your 
practices and routines to them. Yes, yes. It's very okay, true. I really like how you started by saying the biosecurity measures is broad. Yeah. So aside the quarantine, which or quarantine, depending yeah. on where you are watching us from, which you've mentioned is the very first step. Yeah. Which other areas in this broad range would you touch on for me? Okay, so yeah. the second one will also be visitors coming onto the in the farm. Oh, people that's that, one. People that come to visit you, mm -hmm. you need to make sure they are disinfected before they enter the, the pens or even your farm. Right. Wow. So with that, you can put out... Um, people do um, bath, mm -hmm. you shower or yeah. you even before you enter. You can also do foot bath that you step in Yeah. Um, because you might not know where the person is coming from. Yes, yes, right? yes. There are some yes. diseases that are easily transmitted um, to them yeah. through human beings as well. So yeah. you need to make sure they practice that before they come to the farm to see your animals. Wow. Yeah. This is very dear to my heart because we are a model farm. We are a learning and development farm. Yes. And as you know, we get visitors from all over the world passing mm -hmm. through. Yeah. And that reminds me of an encounter recently. Um, so we had a group of visitors pass through and one said, oh, I thought I only have to disinfect if I'm coming from one farm mm, to so your yeah. place. But trust me, Nadia, I'm coming from <laughs> home. <laughs> if that person is watching, yeah. please reiterate the importance of still disinfecting no matter where you are coming from. Should it yeah. be only from a farm before you disinfect? No, okay. wherever you're coming from. <laughs> You might not know what you step in before you come to the farm. Mm, even right. if you drove all yes. the way, you still yes. step down out yeah. of your yes, car. Yes. So wherever you're coming from, whether mm. from other people's farm, whether yeah. from your house, make sure you disinfect before yes. you come onto the farm. Talking right. about disinfection, I know we have one right here at our farm. All I see is, <clears throat> we know it's a solution. Mm. The water we see, what else is inside that water? Yeah, so the water that you see, which is clear, yeah. um, we have some chemicals in that, All right? So um, we have disinfectant that we put in. Is there a particular one you would recommend? It's easy to um, get, you know? Yeah, so the common ones are the patholites. The patholites. And then omnicide. Omnicide? Yes, omnicide. So if anybody goes out there looking for patholites and omnicide. omnicide yes, you can use that for um, your biosecurity measures and the dosage to use because i know you mix it with an amount of water everything is indicated on yes, the bottle everything is on the bottle yeah wow yeah. encourage every one of you out there mm -hmm. follow farming in africa on tiktok youtube please if i subscribe to the youtube channel then you get a lot of knowledge thank you i remain blessed anyway talking about disinfection and foot baths that has been very very eye-opening for me I also know one of the things you do here at the farm to prevent disease outbreak is vaccinations. Yeah. It's something I'm very, very interested in. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. today educate me and my beautiful audience on that. Okay. But I would love for them to see the foot bath we have at our own farm as okay, well, okay. Right. so that um, sure. we take it from there as yeah. we go to where the vaccines are. All right. So if you're coming to the main farm, the farm itself. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. So you need to pass through the treatment center. Yes. Before you go to the farm. So this is the only animals. legitimate entry or yes. entrance to our farm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is the our food bath. Yes. Here. So okay. you step in yeah. and just go there. You see why we also ad advise that you wear boots, you know, uh, farm appropriate footwear. This is, is rubber. So you step, you don't get your feet wet and then you continue in there like that. Please don't visit the Semencial Learning and Development Farm wearing slippers or flip-flops. <laughs> That's no, please just bear that in mind before you visit us next time. Anyway, that was just by the way, but let's go learn more about the vaccination okay. uh, schedules and vaccines we use here at our farm as yeah. well. Okay, Godfrey. Yeah. Are vaccines mandatory in livestock farming? Yes. It I is. see. Right from the young age of the animal, you need to put them on a vaccination schedule. Mm. So they grow, even if they grow, you still repeat that. But it's very important you do it when they are very young. Because okay. um, when they are very young, mm -hmm. um, their immune system is weak. Yes. They are not too strong. Yes. When you give them that, their immune system becomes um, very strong yeah. to fight against diseases. So it's important you do that when they are very young. Talking about uh, weak immunity at a very young age, can somebody argue that that's why 
they let their babies feed on the colostrum. That's the very first breast milk that comes out. So if a farmer argues that, oh, I let my kids feed on that for the very first hour, so I believe they don't need any vaccines, they are fine. Um, what would that, you say to that? It's not enough. They need that. Okay. It's very important to give them that because it has some antibodies that helps their immune system. Okay. Right? Yeah. But once they get that, that when they survive on that mm -hmm. for some time, mm -hmm. for about a month, mm -hmm. you need to put them on a medication or a vaccine so that they can fight the other diseases as well. But for their colostrum, that yeah. is for them to um, be able to feed on their mother's milk to be strong enough mm -hmm. once they are born. Okay, right. so okay, when they okay. are born within the first about 12 hours, you make sure they get that. I to see, be strong enough. I see, right? Yeah, let me digress a little because it's a very important aspect for me. You said make sure they get it at least in the first 24 hours, right? That's 12 hours, the first 12, 12 hours, hours after yeah. birth. <clears throat> yeah, what happens? I have witnessed mothers who get so weak after delivery, they don't even want their babies to come near them to suckle. What happens to those moments? Mm -hmm. Do you kind of force it? Um, if mother and baby are both weak, yeah. what do you do to make sure they get it within that time frame? Yeah, so what you have to do is, it also depends on your management. So when the goat is pregnant, you mm -hmm. need to make sure you give it um, mm. all the feed, the vaccines yes. that will make it strong yes. after delivery. Right? Ah, okay, so okay, okay. So once you do that, you give it the right feed, and had the milk. Even so those the... measures should even start before delivery. Yes. On that <laughs> note, I would make sure we bring you a whole different production on that because if we go into that right now, we will totally deviate from our focus for today. Remember, we are still on the topic of how to prevent disease outbreak at your farm uh, with a special focus on biosecurity measures, on vaccinations and on general farm management practices you have to ensure or put in place at your farm so practically walk me through our vaccination schedule first of all you've mentioned that it's mandatory is important yeah. yes, yes yes so after one month ideally yeah which vaccines do we vaccinate against or yeah. do we use yeah yeah all right so it um we have different vaccines that we use so there okay. are some even at, at two weeks you can Just start, two weeks? Yes, you can start giving them to Okay. Them. So we vaccinate them against um, um, Clostridium diseases. Mm. So with Clostridium, it's very broad. So you have type A, B, C, D, and then you have tetanus as well. Wow. So we vaccinate them that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Depending on the the vaccine that we are using, yes. to tell you even at two weeks, you can start. So here we have the Oviclos P mm -hmm. that we use. We also use Conversant 10. Mm. Yeah, so with the covers in 10, when they are two weeks, you can start giving them. And then after two weeks, mm -hmm. you give them a booster. <clears throat> but with Oviclos P, mm -hmm. you need to wait for about a month, which is four weeks. Okay. Then okay, you give okay, them, okay. and then after four weeks, you give them a booster as well. I see. I, I know for a fact that this disease, PPR, is very prevalent in West Africa especially, yeah. because I know when we got a guest from South Africa, they mentioned it's basically mm -hmm. non-existence yeah. there. Yeah. So over here, what do we do to prevent the PPR, PPR. disease here? Yeah. So with PPR, mm -hmm. we do every six months. And with that, we get it from the Ministry of um, Agri that you okay. cannot buy it from any shop. You need to get it there, then a vet will come and do it for you. Okay. So we okay. do the PPR okay. as well yeah. for them. Okay. Um, and then we also do for anthrax ah, as yes. well. So yes, we have yes. a vaccine for anthrax that yes. we also vaccinate them when they are kids. And then we make sure we continue that. Mm. Right. Yeah. And when you give it to them when they are kids, you don't stop. You need to continue giving it to them. I see. Mostly some of, the, of these vaccines, some will last one year, some will last six months. Okay, 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 right. okay. With okay. the PPR, it's advisable you do every six months. Every six months? Yes. As long as the animal lives? Yes, yes, yes. Wow, yeah. is that deadly? Huh? Yeah, it's very deadly. So it's um, a coccidiosis disease. Mm. So with that, when it attacks the animal, you see it having a foul smell, um, oh. diarrhea. The animal. Right. Oh, I thought you were talking about body odor. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that diarrhea that comes out. It smells it's, badly. It smells very, very bad. Aside yeah. the diarrhea, is there any other potent symptom or sign? Yes, you see that they have some sores on their mouth and mm. then on their tongue. It's mm. not easy, um, it will not be able to eat as well. Mm. Right, and then it starts losing weight. So when the animal gets it, in a matter of how many days would, would you lose the animal? Um, some, just some weeks. 
Wow, yeah. okay. okay. But you okay. need to, once it gets the PPR disease, it's That's not it. easy to fight it. Oh. All right? Yeah. Sometimes you might lose it. Sometimes it will survive. But the wow. survival of that is just 10%. Wow. That's... That is low. Yes. That is low. So, so as much as possible, you do it. Prevent it. Yes. Before it strikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Ah, farm manager Godfrey, thank you for the education. Right, um, it's it's very humbling whenever people write to us via email under our comment sections on our platform, talking about how they are benefiting greatly mm. from the education we give them. And on that note, I always say, if you are not following farming in Africa across all our social media platforms right here on youtube right here on facebook linkedin yes we do write a lot of informative articles and blogs for you and tiktok instagram let's do this journey together okay and the best part about what we do is we are not just talking are we mm -hmm. we have our own farm yes we walk the talk we understand the challenges the victories and all of that that comes with this industry and in case you didn't know Farming in Africa, or Semencia Farms especially, has experience in almost everything livestock. Yeah. Poultry, cattle, sheep, goats. <laughs> Just come, let's do this together. On that note, we will end this particular very educative production on this profound statement. A simple routine check and proper isolation can save your entire flock and years of hard work you've put into investing and into establishing a successful livestock farm well you are not right here with me but i know you are watching so join me say a big thank you <laughs> to farm manager godfred for the knowledge you generously give us all the you're time welcome, today welcome. sign off for me all right thank you very much for watching <laughs> and i hope this video is useful and then you practice that on your farm as well exactly bye bye, bye, -bye. guys <laughs>